Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and I have another crochet cardigan for you. Of course, my favorite thing to make. Um, so this is what it looks like. Let me stand up so you can get a better view. So this really fun stitch that I used in the design and you are working it from side to side for these two main panels. So it goes over your shoulder like this so when you work that foundation row you can put it on over your shoulder and then see that that's the length um, that your cardigan will be and then here's this back panel i really love the detail on the back so this panel is going the opposite direction of your two main panels so it gives it a fun little look um so you'll be making two panels two main panels exactly the same and then the back panel which will go halfway up your main panels we will just sew those together and then you sew up the sides so it's really really simple really easy this was so quick to make um I used Lion Brand's Mako Cotton Yarn, and this is in the color Khaki. It's a worsted weight yarn, but it's so soft, so fluffy. Like, I definitely want to make something else in it, maybe a fall or winter design with this too, because it's just so cozy. It was such a fun yarn to work with. Um, so yeah, and then you just add the sleeves and the trim after to finish it off. If you wanted to, you can easily adjust the length or the um, width of this cardigan. That's super easy to do. Just take note that you will have to adjust the yardage of yarn that you need as well. But if you wanted a longer cardigan, you just add more um, foundation stitches in the beginning and then if you wanted a shorter you can just take it away just make sure you have the same amount on both panels and then you will also have to adjust the back panel as well um, to not make it as tall and then if you want it wider so if you want like more of a looser fit with this cardigan you can just add uh, more rows on both panels before tying off um, so yeah Let's see, I'm trying to think of what else you need to know. This is free on my blog, so you can follow along with the written pattern. I'm making a size small in the video, but you know, I always tell you guys to follow along with the written pattern so you can make sure that the stitch count and row count and everything like that is um, correct while you're making it and following along with the video. So that is free on my blog. I will link that in the description. And then this is also a line brand kit. So that's available on Lion Brand and it comes with the yarn that you need to make your own cardigan and then it comes with the digital download of the pattern and then you can change um, the color of the yarn that you get if you want to. And then of course the printable PDF is available on my Etsy and my Ravelry shop. Um, I think that is all you need to know for this design. It's pretty straightforward. Um, pretty simple to do once you get the stitch down it works up really quickly and it's just a two row repeat um, so yeah really fun to make it really easy super cute to just throw on in the summertime so I hope you guys like this pattern and um, let me know if you have any questions you can reach me by email if you have any specific pattern questions or you can leave them in the comments below um, and I hope you guys like the pattern and I will catch you in the next tutorial. So for this project, you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand's Mako Cotton in the color Khaki. This is a really soft yarn. All the exact yardage is available on my blog for different sizes. Then you're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter hook and a needle and some stitch markers. Okay, so we're going to be starting with the main panel and you will be making two of these panels. They're going to be exactly the same. So once you make this one, you'll have to go back and remake the exact same thing. So we're going to begin with a slip knot. So just go ahead and wrap the yarn around your fingers and then pull through the loop and insert your hook and pull tight. And we're going to be doing a foundation single crochet. So to do foundation single crochet, you're going to chain two. And then we're going to be working our stitch into that first chain that we made. So in that back bump, insert your hook into that little back bump and then yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through the first loop only and then yarn over and pull through both loops. And that is one foundation single crochet stitch. And then again, insert your hook into the bottom of that stitch that we just made, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our second. Again, insert your hook, we're putting it under both those loops, pulling up a loop, pull through the first loop, pull through two, 
You can see it's creating our single crochet stitches and then on the bottom is considered the chain. So it looks like a little V. That's where we are putting our hook with each stitch that we do. So insert your hook under both of those loops of that little V that we made. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two. So I'm going to do this a total of 129 times for the size small. Um, again, we're making this cardigan from side to side. So the starting row is going to be really, really long because it's um, basically the total length of both the back panel and front panel combined. Um, so it's going to be quite long to start off. If you don't know how to do foundation single crochets, I highly recommend getting this down. Um, it just turns out a lot cleaner, but if you don't want to, you can do a starting chain instead and work single crochets back down the chain. Um, so for, again, for the size small, I have a total of 129. So you would have to work 130 chains and then single crochet back down that for a total of 129. And it's going to change depending on what size you make so make sure you're following along with the written pattern so you can double check the amount of stitches you should have for your size so now we are going to be doing row two so for row two you're going to start off by chaining four and turning your work and so this chain four does count as a double crochet plus a chain space so those first three chains are your double crochet and then that last chain is the chain space so keep that in mind and because this counts as a stitch we're not going to be working in this very first stitch from the row below instead we're going to work into the following stitch right after that so you're going to yarn over and insert your hook into the very following stitch under both loops and then yarn over pull up a loop and you have three loops on your hook make sure you lift that loop up high enough with the height of your work and then yarn over insert your hook under the next stitch and pull up a loop and again make sure you lift that loop all the way up then yarn over insert your hook into the third and next stitch and pull up a loop so you can see we have some height with our loops and we have seven loops on our hook and now we're going to yarn over and pull through the first six loops only and so we have two on our hook and then yarn over and pull through those final two so what we just did is called the triad stitch and we're going to be doing that throughout the rest of the pattern so every time you make one of these little stitches you're always going to chain one afterwards in this pattern so make sure you yarn over and pull through for our chain and now we're going to do the same thing again but this time we're going to be working our first um, pull through in that very same stitch as the last pull through of our previous stitch so yarn over and insert your hook into that very same stitch of the last leg of the previous yarn over and pull up a loop then yarn over and insert in into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and insert into the third and final yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through six and then yarn over and pull through two and then of course after we do that we have to chain one so work your chain one and then I'm going to show you guys again how to do it. So and again, we're going to do our first um, pull through in that very same stitch as the last leg of our previous stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, make sure you're giving some height to these loops, yarn over, insert into the next stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the third stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through six, and then yarn over, pull through two, and then work your chain one. So we're gonna do this all the way across the row. You can see these cute little trios that it is making. And this is gonna be um, our repeat row, one of our repeat rows throughout the pattern. So as long as you got this down, you can easily make this cardigan. So continue doing this across the row. Make sure you work that first, um, that leg of the first stitch into the same spot as the previous. Um, so just don't forget to do that and work all the way across and I will meet you guys at the end of the row. Okay, so now I'm coming up on the end of the row here and I only have one stitch left. So we're gonna finish off the row by doing a chain one. So this one is easily um, forgettable. Make sure you don't accidentally skip that last chain one and then work a double crochet stitch into the final stitch of the row. So just a regular double crochet and that completes our very first row.
Your stitch count will also stay the same as well. Those chain spaces do count as a stitch. So I have 129, just the same as the foundation row. And now we are going to start row three. So to start this row, you're going to turn and chain two. And this chain two does not count as a stitch. So unlike the previous row where it does count as a stitch, our starting chain, this one does not. So chain two and in that very first spot, work a double crochet. And then that very first chain space, work a double crochet. Then work a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And again, a double crochet into the next chain space. So when we're working into the chain spaces, we're doing it into the actual space and not into the chain. So it's really easy. Just work into the space, the little gap that's in between the stitches. And you're just gonna do this all the way across the row. One double crochet for every chain space and every stitch across, and I will meet you guys at the end of the row. Okay, so I'm at the end of row three, so I'm gonna show you how to finish off this row. You can see we are up at the chain four that I talked about earlier in the video, which does count as a double crochet and a chain space. So when you're doing this part, make sure you don't forget to work a double crochet into the chain space. So in this little space, you're gonna work a stitch, and then we can't forget that the chain four um, it counts as the stitch and the chain space. So into that very third chain is where you are going to be working your final double crochet. So that last double crochet is worked into the third chain of the starting chain four. So these last two rows that we just did, rows two and three, is what we're going to be repeating throughout the rest of the pattern. So row two, which was the row with the triad stitches, and then row three, which is just a double crochet row, you're just going to repeat rows two and three over and over again until you have the correct amount for your size that you are making. So for row four, you're going to do the same thing as you did in row two. It's just a row two repeat. So you're gonna chain four and turn your work. And then again, the chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain space. And you're gonna do the same thing that you did in row two. So you wanna skip that very first stitch since the chain counts and then start off your triad stitch in the, in the following and just work it all the way across. Don't forget to do your chain ones in between the triad stitches. And you're just gonna repeat the same thing that we did in row two. So this is just a row two repeat and you're gonna do this all the way across the row. I will meet you guys at the end to show you how to finish off row four. So unlike row two where we worked into a single crochet, this time we're gonna be working into a double crochet for the final stitch, so do your chain one, and then work your last double crochet into the last stitch of the row, and then you can go ahead and turn your work and just repeat these rows for the correct amount that you have for your size in the written pattern. So since I'm just doing a little mini sample here, I only have six rows. Yours is obviously gonna be a lot longer and a lot bigger because I'm just doing this little miniature version to show you guys in the video tutorial. So go ahead and go back and work your second panel. So you should have two panels exactly the same um, for your size. And now I'm going to show you guys how to do the back panel and how to join all of these together. So here are my two um, main panels and we're gonna be folding them over like this to to work as the front and the back of the cardigan. But now we're gonna do the little back panel, which is the same as this, um, as the two main panels, um, except opposite. We're gonna be doing it um, from bottom up instead of side to side like these panels. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then I will show you how to join everything together. I have my main panels out in front of me right now. Um, right sides down and I'm just gonna lay them out so you can see the starting single crochet row is on the outside so when we join all these together make sure your foundation single crochet row is on the outer side of the cardigan here along the edges um, you can see on both panels here my single crochet row is on the outside and that's gonna be where we seam the sides up basically they're gonna be the side of the cardigan and the arm hole opening so now we are going to make the main panel in the center here working from bottom to top and it's gonna be so that it reaches at the halfway point of your main panels. 
And I also wanted to point out because of the type of stitch that we're doing in this cardigan, we have to have an odd number of stitches to make it work. So you'll notice that your main panels have an odd amount of stitches, like mine has 129. And so when you split that in half, technically there's going to be an extra stitch on one side or the other, um, which is not a big deal at all. So I'm going to have one more stitch on the back side of the cardigan instead of on the fronts, if that makes sense. But basically it's up at the shoulder, kind of like it would be a seam if we were seaming shoulders together. So just wanted to point that out and it is no problem at all in the design. So now we are going to be doing the back panel of the cardigan and it's going to be the same as the main panels except worked from bottom to top and it's going to be a lot skinnier. So we're going to begin with a foundation row for row one and again if you don't want to do the foundation row you can chain instead but for size small I'm going to work 11 foundation single crochet stitches. So again, the foundation stitches, you stick it into the bottom of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two. And you're going to do that a total of 11 times or as many times as the written pattern calls for your size. If you don't wanna do the foundation row, you can chain 12 and work 11 single crochet or however many stitches you should have for your size. Because I'm just making a tiny little miniature version, I'm just going to do five foundation single crochet. Yours is going to be um, wider than this, obviously, since you're going to make a regular sweater. So then we're going to do the same thing for row two. We're going to do a chain four, which still count, uh, counts as a double crochet and a chain space. And then we're going to do the triad stitches across. I only have one here since I'm doing the little mini version. I'm going to chain one and finish with a double crochet into that final stitch. And then for row three, it's going to be the same as the main panels as well. You're going to chain two and turn your work and work a um, double crochet into each stitch and chain space across. So we'll do that. Don't forget to do it in that very first stitch because the chain two does not count. And then into the chain spaces, into the top of the triad stitches. And then again, don't forget to work that double crochet in the chain space and into the chain three of that starting chain four. So that was row three and now for row four, it's gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna repeat rows two and three until we have the correct amount for our size. So you can go ahead and work another triad row for the row two repeat, and then the row three repeat is going to be a double crochet row. So go ahead and repeat rows two and three until you have the correct amount made for your size. For the size small, I'm going to be working a total of 33 rows, and that does include the foundation single crochet row that we had in the beginning. So I have a total of 33 rows for mine. So now we're gonna join all the panels together. So this is something what it should look like. We have the bottom foundation row lined up with the bottom of our main panels. So you can lay it out like this. Our, um, all of our panels are right side down right now and we have the starting single crochet rows on the outsides of the panels here. And depending on how many rows that you had to do for your back panel, you might be ending on a row two or a row three repeat. It doesn't matter which one you're ending on. And we're going to sew both sides of the back panel to the sides of both of the main panels. So when we're joining, I'm going to slip stitch to join mine across. And for every row that we have here on the back panel, you're going to be slip stitching in two stitches from the main panel. So not including the foundation single crochet row of the back panel. So that counts as one stitch. And then after that, it's going to be joined up about two um, stitches for every row of the back panel, if that makes sense. I'll show you guys really quick exactly what I mean. So when you're sewing together, you'll want two stitches for every row of the back panel to keep it nice and even. And it's going to be this way on both sides. Um, and then it actually works out good that we have an extra stitch on the main panels because that is slip stitched into the starting row down here of the back panel. 
So I'm gonna just show you, instead of trying to explain it, it's easier to see. So you want to make sure that when you're sewing all of your pieces together that you have um, that you're doing it on the correct sides that you should be and that the single crochet rows are on the outside and then you have our starting single crochet row of the back panel along the bottom here and now I'm just going to take one side and show you how to seam it up. So I left a long tail on the second main panel that I did. If you cut without leaving a long tail, that's totally fine. You can just join in with new yarn and you can use a needle here and sew it up, but I just found it a lot easier to slip stitch up, especially since we're working into actual stitches here on the side of the main panel. Um, so I'm just gonna use my hook and this tail of yarn and slip stitch up the side. So we have the corner stitch here on the main panel and the foundation row of the back panel and we're gonna join that together. And then the next two stitches are gonna be worked into the next row of the back panel and the next two stitches are gonna be worked into the the third row of the back panel and the next two stitches into the fourth and so on all the way up. And you can place a stitch marker to hold your spot if you want to, just so you um, know. And that way also if you're sewing with a needle, you know when to stop if you have your stitch marker there. So you can place a stitch marker exactly halfway um, across the main panel. So you'll wanna split your stitches in half and place a stitch marker in between um, the, the middle point of your panel. So I placed mine at the 65th stitch. And then you can see here, I joined with the foundation single crochet row and into the first stitch of the other panel. And now I'm just going to slip stitch to join up the sides. So here's my second slip stitch and into the third stitch there. So now I have the foundation row matched up with a stitch and then two stitches into that second row. And then here I am doing another slip stitch into the third and that second slip stitch into the third as well. So for every single row of the back panel, it is slip stitched into two stitches of the main panel. That's how I found it worked up evenly and it didn't tug or didn't pucker at all with sewing. So every single row on the back panel, slip stitches to join evenly across to two stitches of the main panel. And you're gonna do this all the way up the side of the back panel until you reach that stitch marker, which is the halfway point of um, the main panel. I don't wanna make it sound complicated because it's really not. You're just sewing up the sides halfway on the main panel. But another way you can look at it for the size small, I had a total of 32 rows of the back panel plus the foundation row, so 33 rows total. And then I slip stitched up a total of 65, 65 stitches on the main panel. So 32 times two is 64. And then that 65th slip stitch comes from that the foundation row. So I don't know if that helps make it make it make sense or if it just makes it more confusing, but it all comes down to sewing up the side of the main panel and back panel and you'll reach the halfway point. And it's totally cool too if it's approximate. If you are like re have one less stitch or one more stitch, it's really not gonna matter as long as it's pretty even, as even as you can possibly get it and you're at the halfway point of the cardigan. So now I've joined the first side and you can see that we're halfway across. So when we fold down um, the top of the panel, this is our little front flap of the cardigan and then the back, the back piece is the back of the neckline. And now we just have to do the same thing to the other side. So you can take your second main panel and line it up and it should be easier this time because you can see exactly which stitch you left off on, on the other side as well. And then just make sure you have the seam on the same side as well. So make sure your right sides are facing when you join so that the seam is on the same side as the cardigan. And then you can just slip stitch to join with your hook and a new piece of yarn and sew that in as well. Okay, so now that we have all of our pieces sewn together, we are going to measure out the armhole opening and sew the sides up. So we have um, both of these seamed up the side halfway and when you flip it down, it should resemble a cardigan when you do that. 
So before we go any further, we need to place our, fold it so that the right sides are facing. So you can see my seam is on the outside still and I have both panels folded over um, so that the right sides of the cardigan are facing each other. That way when we seam up the side here, our seam will be on the inside of the cardigan as well, just like on the back that we just did. And now we are going to measure out our armhole opening so depending on what size you make, that amount will change, but you wanna take your measuring tape and just place the zero right up at the shoulder here and then measure downwards down the side of your cardigan um, the correct amount of inches for your arm opening. So for the size small that I made, I measured out seven and a half inches from the top shoulder seam down, and then you can just place a stitch marker through um, both the front and back stitch of the cardigan to hold your spot. And now we're just going to seam up the side of the cardigan. So you're just gonna take your yarn and create a slip knot, and now we're gonna join at the very bottom um, hem of the cardigan. So this is where the bottom of the cardigan is and I'm just going to join it into the very first stitch of the main panel and the very last stitch as well. And we're just going to slip stitch to join and if you're doing a needle you can just sew it up as well whichever way you prefer. But I'm just going to insert it into both the stitches and then yarn over and pull through working my slip stitches up the side. So just make sure you don't skip any stitches or um, anything like that. You wanna make sure you're even across. So stitch four with stitch four, stitch five with stitch five, etc. until you reach the stitch marker. So I'm just gonna do this up the side. And then when I reach the stitch marker, I'm just gonna tie off and cut my yarn and I'm going to repeat this exact same thing on the other side. So you can do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you place your stitch marker in the same spot as you did over here so that the armholes are even and then you can go ahead and join that second side as well. So here is my teeny tiny miniature little cardigan with both sides joined and I still have the holes of the arm. So we are just going to add the little sleeve trim and then the main trim on the cardigan as well. So this is really easy. We're gonna turn our cardigan right side out. So now our seams are on the inside of the cardigan and we are going to join our yarn to any stitch that you want really on the opening of the arm. I like to do it just to the left of the seam. So I'm just gonna slip stitch into the very next stitch after the seam and chain one, and then work a single crochet into that very same stitch, and then just work single crochet stitches all the way around. So your stitch count here does not matter. You most likely will have an odd number of stitches if you um, did your seam incorrectly. You will have an odd number because the um, main panels of the foundation row both all have odd numbers. So if you seamed it up the side correctly, you will have an odd number here at the armhole. And you're just going to single crochet around. If you are off by a stitch or two, it does not matter. You guys do not stress or worry about it. Um, it's not gonna change the pattern at all. So you can just single crochet around and then when you get to the very first stitch that you made, slip stitch into it to join. And then there will be a slight little hole here, but you can sew that up with the tail of your yarn um, afterwards. And then for round two, you're going to work single crochets around again, but this time do it in the back loop only. So the back loop is the loop that is furthest away from you. So instead of the front and back, you're just gonna put it the back loop. So just through one loop, and then just work your single crochet stitches as normal, but just through the back loop only. So go ahead and do that all the way around. And then you, when you reach back around to the beginning, you can do the same thing, slip stitch to join into the very first stitch that you made. And then I did that for a third time. So I'm not gonna show it here, but just do the same thing. Chain one and work a single crochet, back loop only all the way around, and repeat that on the other side as well. So I have both sleeves done here. So you can go ahead and repeat that on the opposite side. And then you just have to add the trim. So I'm not gonna show you how to add the trim because it's just single 
crochet stitches, but I join here at the bottom corner with my sweater right side out, and then I work a single crochet stitch into every stitch and every chain space up the side of the panel, and then when you reach the back neckline, work a single crochet into each stitch and chain space across, and then work your stitches down the second front panel. When you get to the corner down here, work three single crochet into the very same spot to help us turn that corner and to keep going. And then just work single crochet stitches along the bottom. So into the sides of the rows, approximately two single crochet per row across the back panel um, and the bottom stitches and then across the second um, panel as well and finish off with two single crochet in that last stitch that the first one was made and slip stitch to join. Then all you have to do is weave in your ends and that is it.